Hi uh, everybody, this is the homeless vigilante. Um, I'm here to give you testimonial on the gang stalking that has been perpetrated against me for about the past year. Um, what people need to know is that number one thing is that these people are not going to hurt you. They might act like they're going to hurt you, but they're not going to hurt you. That's like rule number one. Um, they play a lot of games with you. So I'm going to try to start from the beginning. Um, and it would start from day one. I was still getting high at the time. I was speedballing. I was doing meth and um, heroin at the time. And uh, I was about to meet a dealer who was going to front me some some black, which is heroin. And um, I was going to start selling for him. Well, while I was waiting for him, I noticed that there was someone following me. So, of course, I thought it was the cops. Um, it wasn't the cops, though. Because it was civilians. <laughs> it was a lot of them. I realized that there was that first night, there was a white camera, Camry, that followed me everywhere, and there was a brown, brownish, like, um, tannish, goldish color, like, suburban, maybe, um, both of them cars stayed in the distance, but they followed me everywhere I went, when I realized that night that I was being followed, so, with people, what happens when you first realize you're being followed, you think people are trying to kill you, literally, so, um, they, they followed me around the city on foot for a while, so I got on a bus. They followed me in a car while I was on the bus, and they had someone on the bus with me. Um, I told the bus driver, it was so bad that I told the bus driver, and she saw that they were following me. She saw that the car was waiting for me to get off. She saw it, and I told her, to um, if anything happens and and some she hears something on news, she knows what happens. Report it to her people. And um, I got off. I went to Denny's because I was scared. And there was a guy in there that acted like he wanted to help me. So he said he would walk me to the bus stop because I was scared to death. I thought these people were going to kill me. And. Um, the guy got like a text and he was in on it. He started looking at me all crazy and he was holding a uh, pen like it was a knife, like he was going to stab me with it. I was sitting here watching him do it. So I accused him of being in on it and I went up the street. I didn't even get on the bus. This guy came. Now, everyone's wearing red at the time this particular night. They look like gang members to me. Um, I'm from a city that there's a lot of bloods from in Richmond, Virginia. Represent, baby, baby. No, um, so there's a lot of bloods. I, I saw a lot of red. So this black dude comes up. He's got a duffel bag. He's wearing a red bandana, red shirt. He strolls up. There's another guy standing there. He looked homeless. He had a cart. And I told him that people were following me. And he believed me. And I, sw I exchanged information with him. And um, he got spooked and left. So I called the police. The police did nothing except tell me um, if... You call us again, we're going to lock you up. That's what the police did to help me. There was a woman there that saw everything that was going on. She even told the police that, yes, she thinks someone was following me, but she don't know who it is, just like me, just like I didn't know who it was. I was on drugs. I had a friend that lived in San Jose. I went to his house at about 3 o'clock in the morning and asked him just to sleep on his porch because I was scared. And he said no. Well, for about the past the f 10 days went by, and I hadn't had any sleep. Because they don't let you sleep. Every time you 
lay your head down or not off. They wake you up somehow by either throwing a pebble at you, walking by, dragging their hand across your tent, screaming, yelling out their car. There's a million different things they do to wake you up. They play mind games. Somehow they got a recording of my mom and my dad's voice and they would play it from a distance. Come on, baby, come on. And they would play it from a distance and I thought it was them. I thought they were in on it and that's part of the people's plan. Um, they want you to alienate yourself from your family. So I literally like disowned my mom for about four or five months. I didn't talk to her at all. I blamed her. I said she had something to do with it because I thought the people were trying to get me sober is what after a while. Now, when I change up who I think the people are, it's because I still don't know who they are. The group changes. They change up their, so like one day it might be people that look like gang members. The next day it might be all Asians that don't speak any English. What I'm saying is they're so good at it. It's damn near impossible to prove. So suggestion number one, ignore them. That's the absolutely best thing you can do. Once you realize they're not going to hurt you, ignore them. Um, and that's video number one. Now, next video we're going to pick up um, within the first two weeks, I ran all the way to San Francisco. I got on a train and went, uh, it's a couple of hours train ride from here. Someone followed me down there. So I'll pick up there on my next video. Till then, my name's Homeless Vigilante, Lee. Thank you. God bless.